it has been requested that I do a um, painting supplies video, basic painting supplies, because I've mentioned painting supplies several times, but it's always been part of another video, and so never done a part of the basic series. So here we go. Uh, brushes, obviously mandatory use. Um, you got a wide variety, of, very daunting variety uh, number of brushes that you can possibly use. Uh, I will just tell you what I use, which is I prefer um, synthetic brushes, uh, high quality synthetic brushes. Uh, these are uh, Princeton Art 4050 series brushes. And uh, I use a number two. This is one that's a bit frayed already on its last leg. That's a new one there. And um, the brush you want to use, <clears throat> you could use synthetics, you can use natural hair brushes. Um, it depends on your style and just whatever you like. Um, if you're just starting out, I would suggest going to a craft store and getting some golden Taclon bristle brushes. They're cheap um, and they work pretty well and I like them. Uh, you have synthetic brushes and you have natural hair brushes. Uh, as I said, I prefer synthetic. Uh, natural hairs, uh, some people like those. Um, they have less snap, but they um, they can be a bit finer quality. But now synthetics have gotten so far and uh, advanced so far, they're they're pretty close. And synthetics do clean uh, clean up easier than uh, natural hair brushes. Uh, standard size is number two. A lot of people think you need the uh, smallest brush possible. This number zero here I only use for um, eyeballs, and that is it. Uh, you actually want to use the largest brush you can get away with, not the smallest. So a number two here is uh, pretty pretty standard for me. And you're going to need a couple other uh, variety of brushes. I mean, the, the number two is my workhorse, and 90% of the work's done with that. One small brush for super fine details. And then you need a couple other cheaper brushes for dry brushing and what have you. Cat's tongue, a rounded top like this is good for dry brushing. The other mandatory thing you need are paints. And here's my paint box here. Uh, I got tons of paints. Uh, this is just what I keep on the desk. I got a closet full of uh, additional paints. Uh, what brand to use? I would say, suggest Vallejo, which is, this is all Vallejo here. Uh, if you're painting Games Workshop, use Vallejo. If you're using Privateer Press, use Vallejo. If you're painting, just use Vallejo. A couple reasons for that. First of all, it's really high quality paint. Uh, there's a lot of pigment, uh, so they cover well. Uh, there's a wide variety of colors. So the model color alone has 200 and uh, over 220 colors. You got uh, game color, which is like 80 colors. Uh, model color is good for military stuff um, or general use. Uh, game color tends to be brighter, more intense colors, good uh, for fantasy and sci-fi miniatures. You have the model air range, which is made for airbrushes. I use the metallics and brush those on because the metallics have aluminum powder in them and they're very fine. And then you have some series like the Panzer Ace series, which is uh, marked in under for uh, Panzer Ace, uh, Panzer Ace's magazine. So, of course, they're sort of rebranded, but they're specific colors to that range. Um, so they're good, high quality. The second reason why I recommend Vallejo is um, Vallejo only sells paints, and so they're not relying on a miniature line or a game line to stay uh, to keep in production and make money. Um, game companies come and go and game companies tend not to make their own paints they license them out games workshop does not make their own paints privateer press does not make their own paints um, games workshop perfect example they've changed their manufacturer for paints three or four times and so a bottle of barbarian leather from 10 years ago is not the same color uh, as barbarian leather is today even if they still make barbarian leather i think they changed the name of that um, but I have a, a closet full of paints that I can no longer get anymore because the company who was licensing them out is out of business. I got i -Core. I use a couple of these on my um, Dark Elves. I can't never get this color anymore, so once I'm out of it, I have to try to make my own. Games Workshop keeps changing colors. Um, I used to use Cote Arms, which is really hard to get now. It's not out of business, but it's difficult to get in the U.S. So Vallejo, good quality paint. They're not going to go anywhere. Um, and so I would recommend these. This is just a wood box from a craft store. I have a little hole drilled in the side for a little, whatever this is, dress pin to clear out the uh, nozzles if they get clogged. 
That's your secondary secondary mandatory thing you need. Um, next is some sort of paint palette. All you need is some sort of non-porous object. It could be a piece of plastic, like a plastic plate. Uh, this is a ceramic tile from Home Depot. Costs like 50 cents. Um, good thing about this is you. Uh, when I need to clean it, I just put it in the sink when I'm about to do dishes and a couple minutes under warm uh, running water and just wipe it off and all the paint comes right off. I also used to use glass tiles or um, glass from picture frames from the 99 cent store, but uh, this is a bit more durable. Uh, you need some sort of water vessels. You need two of them. Um, one for metallics, one for regular paint. Uh, you don't want to get your metallic flakes mixed into your regular well water because then uh, as you're cleaning your brush and thinning out your paint, um, you don't want to end up with little sparkles on your leather tunic or whatever. So two separate ones, anything that contains water. Uh, a lot of people ask me where I got these. Uh, I picked these up years ago. Uh, they're actually no spill um, paint cups for kids and uh, they're beveled. So I have a lot of electronics around because I have to record these videos for you guys at the same place I paint. So. I don't have to worry about the paint splashing around and getting on any of the electronic equipment around here. And uh, anyway, I found these online and uh, I'll put a link below if anyone's interested in picking these up yourself. Uh, you need something to wipe your brushes on, a simple paper towel folded in quarters. Uh, I also use a um, old t-shirt when needed. If I'm doing some really heavy and a lot of dry brushing, whoops, like this, using this, I don't want to uh, do it all on the paper towel because it'll use it all up in one go. So grab the t-shirt as needed. Um, need super glue. This is BSI industry super glue. Uh, you see this at a lot of stores. Um, retail stores will put their own label on it. Um, so extra thick super glue. You need some accelerant which speeds up the drying time of the super glue so you don't have to sit there and holding it for five minutes. Um, you may hear that people think that this dries or uh, makes the super glue more brittle. I've been using this for decades. I haven't noticed any loss of strength. So I think that's uh, both of those are mandatory. You need something to cover your painting surface. Uh, could just be a piece of paper. Newspaper is good. This is actually a mat for um, working with clay that I found at the craft store. It's some, it's like Teflon coated. And so just like the tile just cleans up with warm water, but uh, just something so you don't, you know, in case you spill paint, newspaper, piece of cardboard works fine. Um, plastic cement, not plastic glue, but plastic cement. Uh, Tamiya extra thin, I suggest because it has a nice, uh, nice uh, brush on the end. So you can use it right out of the bottle. If you use a different type of, uh, like the tester's um, plastic cement has this nasty, huge, useless brush on the end. So you could uh, just take one of your old brushes, obviously one you're not using for painting anymore, and use that to apply your uh, cement. As I said, it's not glue, it's cement, because what this does is actually it melts the glue, put it on both ends, and it melts the glue and forms, when you put it, uh, dries, it basically melts the glue, melts the plastic. And then the, when the, it's dry, it... Um, becomes one solid piece of plastic instead of two separate pieces. So this works a million times better than um, using super glue on plastic. And that's your main thing. Oh, one other thing I forgot is a definite must is some sort of hobby knife. Uh, handle really doesn't matter just so it can use a standard number 11 X-Acto knife blade. And speaking of X-Acto knife blades, they're a bit expensive buying them in packs of five. So I buy them by the gross. These are some no-name, you know, made in China uh, blades. So I get like a hundred of them or something for sixteen dollars. Much more economical. That's mostly it. Um, other things are highly useful: clippers, some heavy-duty ones for clipping plastic, or excuse me, clipping metal. Uh, thinner ones for doing plastic. Some other things I've mentioned before in their own specific videos, diamond tip files. I don't want this to go too long, so I'm not going to mention everything. Uh, pin vise and paper clips for pins. Foam sanding sticks for um, sanding plastic, since the metal is a bit too harsh for that. And various wax carving or sculpting tools for 
um, doing putty work, filling in seam lines and what have you. So that's mostly it. I can go on forever and ever showing you all the supplies here. I'm trying to keep it very basic because uh, I could go on for like an hour showing you everything I have and everything that I use. But uh, this is just a basic starter of um, what, what you need to get to start painting. Um, the paints, in case you're wondering about colors, um, I really don't have any colors to suggest because I don't know what you're painting. Obviously, if you're painting uh, historical stuff, you're, you're going to need a bunch of bright purples. And if you're painting fantasy, you know, you're not going to need a lot of golden brown or U.S. dark green. So get black, get white, get a couple metallics from the air range, get your basic primary colors and a couple browns, and then get more depending on what you're painting for if you need. You know, you're painting Shermans, get more greens. If you're painting Tyranids, get more pinks and purples or what have you, whatever you need. So that is mainly it. Um, one thing I really do want to mention is, especially if you're just starting out, you'll hear a lot of people recommending, you know, getting the most expensive things and saying, oh, you know, you can't just use water. You got to use, for thinning your paints, you have to use some sort of... Uh, mixture of extenders and flow aids and stuff like that or don't use synthetic brushes use Kowinski sable brushes I try to keep things very basic for people because I paint very basically um, the Kowinski sable brushes are the most expensive brushes that you're gonna find um, they're nice brushes however a I wouldn't recommend them for a beginner painter because you're not gonna know how to treat the brush and it's you're gonna burn through it really fast and b just because something's the most expensive doesn't mean it works the best for everybody. I don't like sables. They're too floppy. Um, I much prefer uh, synthetic brushes that have a much, much more spring to them. Uh, so for me, Kowinski sables do not work. And uh, just getting a really expensive brush is not going to make you an excellent painter. It's, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all about practice and how you use it. Again, um, for thinning your paints, um, I just use my dirty well water. You know, that, that's what I use to thin my paints right here. Uh, a lot of people are going to say, oh, use distilled water and put the retarders in it and um, flow aids and what have you. I don't use this. I just use plain old tap water. And people say, oh, you shouldn't use this. I do, and it works fine. And if you're just starting out, it's going to work completely fine for you. If that doesn't work and you want to try something else, that's great. But you know, putting together this mix is going to cost you, you know, eight bucks worth of stuff. This is free and it works. So I'm showing all this to you because I don't have, I don't go out buying most expensive stuff of everything. I use what's more comfortable for me and that helps me to learn how to paint better. And while I'm not saying the Kowinski Sables are bad or doing this is bad. What I'm saying is use what's comfortable for you. And if you're just starting out, don't go buying the most expensive stuff because it may not work best for you. Tap water could be totally fine. Um, start off with the cheap stuff. And then if you think it's not working or you want to try something else, then go ahead and get the most expensive stuff. Um, so that's, that's it. Um, again, lots of stuff I could show you, um, but we're already going on to, ooh, we're already on to 14 minutes here almost. So, but uh, yeah, that's the basics. My little tool chest here. The, the one that sits in the desk. I got a lot more. But uh, okay, if you have any questions, put them below. Hope this helps. Bye-bye.